Hey guys, it's uh, Christian here again, and uh, this vlog is going to be about how to germinate, well, how to germinate different types of palm seeds in closed containers. Now, for closed containers, when I germinate a large quantity of seed, uh, sometimes I don't want to just put it in a community pot and just dump them in and put some soil on it. Um, there are ways to get more heat going to the seed or the more heat is required. It's either required or it speeds up the germination process. So um, again, I apologize. These, this is just raw video. I am not a video editor. I just, I grow plants. So, um, you know, I don't have a perfect stage or anything for this sort of thing. So excuse the mess, but um, right here is my little swamp I've created for uh, Cedar Statues Renda, otherwise known as the Lipstick Balm. And these grow in a very swampy, tropical climate in Malaysia. And they don't like drainage at all. And they like to be always wet and always warm. Um, I keep these in the garage. These could be potted up into 4-inch pots. But I don't want to do that right now because it's still kind of chilly. We could still get a sub-45 night, 45 degree Fahrenheit night here. So I'm keeping them here until about Mar another month another three weeks and then I'll I'll put them uh, into pots but I keep this moist all the time if you can see the condensation on uh, well this is the top to that one so you can see the water it's very wet it's just a very hot humid environment in there and they thoroughly enjoy that now you can notice there's a little bit of perlite that's mostly cocoa fiber in there so it's just a humid environment in fact the roots are actually growing out perfectly fine outside of the soil because they're they're just moist if as long as the roots are uh are nice and moist they don't mind if they're in soil or out just the soil tends to hold the moisture so here's another this one needs to be watered i mostly clean this one out just from uh, uh selling seedlings as they were or just germinated seed uh, you know i had about a thousand seeds so i couldn't just put them in the community pots let them sit outside they're just never going to germinate that way uh here is a newer acquisition and these are Adelaide Butyracea seed. Now, this is a classic um, seed that requires a lot of uh, a lot of heat and moisture to germinate. These are native to well, Adelaide is native to Central and South America, but um, I think Butyracea is native to Mexico. I'm not positive. I have to look it up. There's about 80 species, and I couldn't tell you exactly. Uh, but here, when I close this bin, when I put this top on this bin here close it up oh this is gonna be hard one-handed <laughs> so I'm gonna close this up here and then the, these little lock you can get these at big lots for like six bucks and that's where I go big lots and when you close it like that and then when the heat heat comes in it actually holds it even better if we have it in sunlight it does it it, it cooks it some you know so to speak even more so for those that is how I germinate the, seeds that need more humidity um you know and what when you well i shouldn't have closed that but if you in the perlite in there it's 100 percent perlite just a bin of perlite you water it in and you can just most of the time the, you don't need to water it again maybe once or twice but check on it every week or so especially for germination um now when you water it in the perlite's gonna when you dump in the perlite it's gonna be all powdery and you know it's gonna be kind of make this big fluff and you don't, you don't want to inhale perlite it's not good for you uh it's just you know uh, a puffed up uh mineral but uh you want to make sure the the perlite is nice and wet and it's uh you don't want water sitting at the bottom you can see there's just some condensation on there and that's about it so that's the best way to germinate those and you can see up here a little bit of mold is kind of forming um you know it's not necessarily bad if you see mold in there it really depends. These seeds are meant to take this kind of uh, wetter uh, human, you know, in human environment. So they don't tend to succumb to fungus like other plants do or other palms do. Um, now for these here are all tropical zamia seeds. Now zamia is the same family as the kunti or uh, you know the F Florida's native cycad. These are all tropical ones. They're native to Panama, Costa Rica, Colombia. Um, they're all in cocoa fiber in baggies and I tumble them around kind of the, like aerate the cocoa fiber. You want to be, I take, take these, I, I'm very delicate with these because of the nature of, you know, they are not, 
Well, they're, they're a little bit harder to grow and they're not cheap. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll look at them every couple of days to kind of see which ones are germinating. So that's how I do that part. Let me pause this and I'll go outside. Okay, so I'm not positive which one of these has all the... These are all ones I think that are germinated. So we're back in the back. And you can see these are kind of all over the place, but this is Allogopter arenaria. And they're doing pretty well. Their roots are, uh, you know, their roots are everywhere, but they're nice and uh, humid. I kind of left a little bit of the fruit on. That's why it's stained a little bit. That's okay. They, you know, most seeds tend to be okay with that. Um, and here's Orango westerhudii. I didn't get great germination. I think that's due to the fact that the seed was not 100% fresh. I got it from overseas. And for the big daddy here, let's hope they're still doing well. <laughs> As you can see, this is Gaussia princeps. This is a plant that normally grows on rocky cliffs in uh, in Cuba. Really tall, kind of like a bottle palm. And that's Camaduria tepalajote native to Mexico, um, kind of a bigger camaduria, almost looks like a, like the king palm of the, uh, of the Americas, in a way, of the, of, at least of the camaduria. So they're all over the place, but it's so humid. See these, see those little fuzzy parts of those roots? It's actually little, uh, I want to say they're capillary roots that absorb moisture, and they're just, they're loving that right now. The only downside is they're not getting a lot of uh, sun, so they are a little bit stretched out. Now when I pot them up, which will be soon, there's about, I don't know, 200 there. Um, you know, they'll get a little bit more sun. So, things to remember when, um, when you're, when you're doing things in closed containers, now realize that fungus can, is an issue. If you put a bunch of, too much water in, and the plants are not a big fan of, uh, you know, sitting in a very moist, moist humid environment, you, you don't want to put desert-like palms in, in seed containers. That will cause them to rot. Uh, this is more for tropical. Let's just open this up here just for the sake of looking. And so um, this is for more going to be subtropical, and, subtropical humid, and tropical plant uh, palms. And, uh, you know, this also works well with a lot of cycad seeds, surprisingly. Um, if you have good cycad seed, um, you, you want to always clean the fruit off. Don't leave the fruit on when putting them in bins like this because the fruit will rot and the rot will be so bad it will actually cause too much fungus. So obviously I have a, a potting project here, um, a little bit out of control. And this happened in the middle of the winter too. So, you know, 75 degree or 75 degree highs, you know, created more of like an 85 degree environment inside there. And um, it, it really boosted those seeds up to, <laughs> they're definitely ready for a pot. So. Anyway, um, that's about it for the, uh, the bin germination. I'll do like an open air germination. I'll show you what kind of palms will grow best in the open air. I also need to make sure that that, fun that staining and fungus doesn't get into the other seeds here. So thanks for uh, watching, and uh, feel free to uh, send me an email or a comment. Um, you can get me at cfkingfish at gmail.com. And thank you for watching.